Hello there and welcome to the third video in our series of data representation videos. In this video we're going to go through negative numbers. So there's two different methods of negative numbers and one method is called sign and magnitude representation and the second method is two's complement. So here I will give you the binary number 11. There shouldn't be any surprises there. Now sign and magnitude, what it does is it takes the most significant bit, so in our case of an 8-bit number, 128, and it makes it a signed bit, which means it can be only a positive or a negative. The rest of the number is then used as the magnitude, and that represents the number. Now if we put a 1 in the signed bit, we can represent a negative number, and if we change the signed bit to a 0, then that means we're representing a positive number. And that is as difficult as it's going to get. Now have a look at this example here. I've shown you an 8-bit example with a signed bit in the most significant bit. And that gives me a maximum range of positive or negative 127. So I've gone from 256 and I've dropped down to 127 for my range. And that is a disadvantage. Also, have a look at this example. If I have all zeros for my binary numbers, but I change the sign bit from a zero to a one, that technically gives me two representations of zero. And that is a major, major issue. So we're gonna have a look at how that's rectified later. But first, let's have a look at a typical exam question from I think the 2016 or 17 paper from that was released from Educast. So let's have a look at this one. So using denary numbers, plus 8 and minus 8, describe how positive and negative integers are stored using sign and magnitude representation. So the first thing that I would do here is I would demonstrate plus 8 and negative 8 using sign and magnitude representation. Always give an example. It doesn't matter how many marks it's worth, it will always go in your favour. Now my example uses 8 bits, but you will still get credit for using the minimum amount of bits. So here it is displayed at the top, I'll write plus 8 up there, and then I'll change my sign bit to a 1 to demonstrate how negative 8 is also produced. So here is my answer. The most significant bit will indicate if the number is positive or negative. If we put a 1 in the most significant bit, it will show a negative 8. If we put a 0, it will show a positive 8. The rest of the bits are used as the magnitude for the number 8. And students in answers continue to forget that the magnitude demonstrates the value of the actual number you're trying to represent. The sign bit is one bit in the most significant that will show you or show whoever that you are trying to demonstrate a positive or a negative number. And I will reiterate, it's so important that you use an example to get your point across. The question also, like I said, doesn't specify how many bits, but the mark scheme will allow you to use the smallest amount of bits possible. So, so far, so good. That is everything that we need to know about sign and magnitude representation. Now we're going to look at the other method of representing binary numbers in a negative fashion, and this is called two's complement. And like I said before, it's used in all the computers that I know and it's going to become really important later on when we start adding binary numbers together. So here in this example, we're going to look at representing minus 14 in two's complement. The first step is to produce positive 14 and I'm going to use 8 bits for this example. So there it is, I'll have 1, 8, 1, 4 and 1, 2 and that makes positive 14. Now, there is two methods to this, however, I'm only going to show you how to do one of the methods. And the reason why I do that is because the first method where you flip all the bits and add one, students tend to make really simple mistakes adding the binary numbers together and it produces more errors than the second method which I'm going to show you now. So my method is basically starting from the least significant bit take all the values up to and including the first bit and flip the rest. So let's have a look at this example. I will take 
the zero and the one because that's up to and including my first one. Then I flip the bit. So if I have a one, I'll flip it to zero. If I have a zero, I'll flip it to one. And that means that the end most significant bit becomes minus 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 and plus two because that's where I carry my ones. If you work that out and put it into a calculator, it should come up to the value of negative 14. Now, I know we're going a little bit quick, so let's put that into the context of an example. Describe how the deanery number negative eight is stored using two's complement representation. Now, from my experience, the questions that talk about two's complement, you will always have to explain your method. So my model answer for this is from the right hand side or the least significant bit, rewrite the binary number eight up to and including the first one and invert the rest of the bits. And like I said before, always use an example. So in this example, I've shown positive eight in normal binary and then simply went up to and including the first one and inverted the rest of the bits. And that should get you two marks. In this question here, we are using the number negative 27 as an example. Describe two's complement and sign of magnitude representation in an eight bit register. So it's been very specific here that we're using eight bits and we need to show both two's complement and sign of magnitude. So all I'm gonna do is I divide my page in half, I write two's complement on the left, sign of magnitude on the right, and I give an example. Now we've already been through the explanation for two's complement, so I'm just gonna write an example here. And my example is positive 27, and underneath I have taken up to and including the first bit, invert the other bits to produce negative 27. For the sign and magnitude part, I'll recap this because we did it in the last video, but the most significant bit indicates the sign being zero for positive or one for negative. The rest of the bits are used for the magnitude, which is the value of the number. So here I do positive 27 in normal binary, and then my sign bit becomes one to make it a negative number. And that's worth five marks, which you'll probably agree in an exam setting is a win-win situation. Okay, one more example, and then we'll call it quits. In this question, it says, assuming that one is used to indicate a negative number, show how the negative number minus 13 will be represented using sign and magnitude in an eight bit register. So that one's nice and simple. For one mark, I will represent 13 using eight bits. One bit, my most significant bit being reserved for my sign part of my number. I'll take 1, 8, 1, 4, and 1, 1 to produce 13, and I make my most significant bit 1. And that's it for one mark, nice and simple. For the second question, integers can also be represented using twos complement. Describe using an example how the twos complement of a binary number is derived. So this one again, nice and simple explanation. Starting from the least significant bit, copy up to and including the first one and flip the rest and always use an example. And these appear in every exam paper so far. So if you get the explanation right, we should be on to a winner. And that's it for this video. In the next video, we're gonna look at adding and subtracting binary numbers. Now we can convert our binary numbers into negatives. So hopefully you'll join me there.